now now let me discuss about the mushroom poisoning this mushroom poisoning this is also called as mycetism right this is also called as mycetism now this particular mushroom poisoning we have two types one is early mushroom poisoning and the other one is late mushroom poisoning now i'll tell you what is the differences between them first you take the early mushroom poisoning right so if you take the early mushroom poisoning this early mushroom poisoning this is caused by the two important species one is the inocybe species will cause early mushroom poisoning and the other one is the clytocybe species okay so inocybe species and as well as the clytocybe species they will cause the early mushroom poisoning now what does this early mushroom poisoning mean is you take the symptoms of onset the symptoms they manifest within 30 minutes right symptoms if you see they manifest within 30 minutes and what are these symptoms basically these are the symptoms or the clinical features of cholinergic excess right cholinergic excess okay now what are the symptoms of the cholinergic excess that includes mainly diarrhea because of increased gastrointestinal motility next because of the cholinergic excess the secretions also increases so that is why they will have excess of lacrimation and if you take the effect on the heart the cholinergic excess will reduce the heart rate of the individual so it will cause bradycardia right the individual will have bradycardia okay now so because the clinical features are because of the cholinergic excess therefore the drug of choice here in case of early mushroom poisoning will be atropine so drug of choice is atropine in case of early mushroom poisoning which is caused by the inocybe and as well as the clytocybe species next we have another species which is causing mushroom poisoning that is amanita muscaria right the other species is amanita muscaria so if you take this particular amanita muscaria amanita muscaria poisoning do not manifest as cholinergic crisis right so there is no cholinergic excess in case of amanita muscaria poisoning now why there is no cholinergic excess is because the muscarine content in case of amanita muscaria is too low right so why there is no cholinergic excess is because right the muscarine content right muscarine content is low in case of amanita muscaria poisoning now then why are the symptoms produced the symptoms produced in case of amanita muscaria are right the symptoms produced are mainly due to other contents right what are the other contents which are present so if you take the other contents in case of amanita muscaria the other contents they include mucimol right the other contents include mucimol next they include ibotenic acid right the other contents are the ibotenic acid and apart from ibotenic acid you also have the isoxazole derivatives isoxazole derivatives so these are the contents in case of the amanita muscaria which will produce the symptoms
Now, what does these particular agents will do? So, these agents that is mucimol, ibotenic acid and isoxazole derivatives, these agents they will cause or they will stimulate the excitatory and as well as the inhibitory neurotransmitters. So, what they will do is they will stimulate the excitatory and as well as the inhibitory neurotransmitters. Alright. Now, therefore, what will be the symptoms? Now, for example, if the excitatory neurotransmitters are stimulated or if there is excess release of the excitatory neurotransmitters, in such case, what will happen? So, in case of Amanita muscaria, if it is causing the stimulation of the excitatory neurotransmitters, right? If it is causing the stimulation of the excitatory neurotransmitters, what all will be the manifestations or what all will be the symptoms is, these symptoms, they range from irritability, right? They will have excess delirium, okay? So, irritability, delirium and next is restlessness, ataxia, next hallucination, right, ataxia, hallucination, delirium. So, these will be the manifestations if the excitatory neurotransmitters are stimulated excessively. Whereas, if there is stimulation of inhibitory neurotransmitters, right, if there is stimulation of the inhibitory neurotransmitters, in such case, the individual will have drowsiness and as well as sedation, right, drowsiness and as well as sedation, that is because of the stimulation of the inhibitory neurotransmitters. Now, you take the treatment. Now, what is the treatment we give in case of the Amanita muscaria? The treatment, it is mainly supportive, right? The treatment is mainly supportive. Whereas, if there is too much excitation, right? In case of excessive stimulation of the excitatory neurotransmitters, if there is too much excitation, in such case, the benzodiazepines are indicated. So, when excitatory neurotransmitters are too much stimulated and if there is very severe excitation, in this case, what is being used? We use benzodiazepines. Okay, we use this benzodiazepines. One very important point what you should remember is, in case of this Amanita muscaria, the atropine is contraindicated. Now, why do you think that the atropine is contraindicated? Because it will exacerbate the delirium, right? Already in patients with Amanita muscaria, there is delirium. Atropine also will cause the delirium when it is given in excess quantity. So, that is the reason why in case of Amanita muscaria poisoning, the atropine right, atropine is contraindicated, right. So, this is a very, very important point about the Amanita muscaria. Now, let me shortly revise about the early mushroom poisoning. You take this mushroom poisoning, this is also called mycetism. And this early mushroom poisoning is caused by the inocybe and as well as the clitocybe species. Early mushroom poisoning in the sense, the clinical features will develop within 30 minutes. And the clinical features are mainly because of the cholinergic excess. They include diarrhea, lacrimation and bradycardia. That is the reason why the drug of choice is atropine. Whereas, you take in case of Amanita muscaria, there is no cholinergic excess. Why there is no cholinergic excess is because the muscarin content is very low in case of Amanita muscaria. The other contents what you see in case of Amanita muscaria is mucimol, ibotenic acid and as well as isoxazole derivatives. What these particular substances will do is, they will stimulate either excitatory or inhibitory neurotransmitters. So, if for example, if the excitatory neurotransmitters are 
stimulated excessively, these individuals will have irritability, delirium, restlessness and ataxia. Because of the stimulation of the inhibitory neurotransmitters, they will have drowsiness and as well as sedation. Now, you see in these individuals as a part of the treatment, if there is too much stimulation of the excitatory neurotransmitters, the drug what we give is benzodiazepine, right? As such, the treatment is mainly supportive. And atropine is completely contraindicated because it may exacerbate the delirium. So, now within this mushroom poisoning, now let me tell you about the right now let me tell you about the delayed mushroom poisoning right now let me tell you about the delayed mushroom poisoning now you see this delayed mushroom poisoning this delayed mushroom poisoning it is due to amanita phylloids and as well as the Galerina species, right? So, this is due to Amanita phylloids and the other species which will cause the delayed mushroom poisoning is the Galerina species. So, these are the two species which will cause delayed mushroom poisoning. Now, what are the toxins? The principal toxins in this uh, Amanita phylloids is mainly the amatoxins, right? The principal toxin is amatoxin. Now, what does this amatoxin do? Remember, this particular amatoxins, they act by inhibiting the mRNA synthesis, right? They act by inhibiting the nucleic acid synthesis that is mRNA, right? They act by inhibiting the mRNA synthesis. Now, the problem with the amanita phylloids, like what will be the clinical manifestation or what will be the disorder what is seen in the individual? This particular amanita phylloids or this amatoxin what it will do is, it will cause both renal and as well as the hepatic dysfunction. Right, it will cause both the renal dysfunction and as well as the hepatic dysfunction. Next, how do you treat this particular delayed mushroom poisoning? The treatment is largely supportive. Right, the treatment is largely supportive and apart from that, with the drugs which we give, what are the antidotes? The antidotes like what we can give is penicillin, right, so one is your penicillin, next is thiotic acid, okay, and the other very important substance is your silbinin. Right, silbinin. So these are the drugs which are acting as the antidotes. Right, which are acting as the antidotes in case of the delayed mushroom poisoning which is caused by the amanita phylloids. Now, what are the adverse effects with these drugs? Right, so if you take the adverse effects which are associated with these particular drugs, they include mainly the dry mouth, blurred vision, urinary retention, hyperthermia, confusion, delirium and as well as restlessness. Okay. So, they will have dry mouth. Apart from this particular dry mouth, why dry mouth? Because mainly the salivary secretions will be reduced by these particular drugs. So, not only that, there will be blurred vision. Now, why do you think the individual will have the blurred vision is mainly due to midriasis and as well as cycloplegia. These particular anticholinergic drugs, what do they cause? They will cause the dilatation of the pupil and loss of accommodation. So, because of midriasis, right, because of midriasis and loss of accommodation which is called as cycloplegia. So, due to these two reasons, they will have blurred vision. Next, 
Apart from that, what is the effect of these anticholinergic drugs on the urinary system? They will cause the urinary retention. And what they will do to the gastrointestinal tract? They will cause the reduction in the gastrointestinal motility. That is the reason why they will have constipation. Right? And another important feature is increase in the body temperature that is hyperthermia. Right? Hyperthermia is another very important feature. And you take the CNS manifestation of these anticholinergic drugs. Right? They can have they can cause confusion. They can cause delirium. Right? They can cause even delirium and as well as restlessness. Right? And as well as restlessness. So these are all the adverse effects which are seen associated with these particular drugs which are used in the treatment of the amanita phylloid poisoning. So this is completely about your the mushroom poisoning which is called mycetism. So we have early mushroom poisoning where the symptoms onset will be within 30 minutes and the delayed mushroom poisoning which is mainly caused by amanita phylloids and as well as the galerina species the toxin is mainly the amatoxin which act by inhibiting the mRNA synthesis. And in this uh, mushroom poisoning, there is both hepatic and as well as renal dysfunction. And the treatment is mainly supportive and the antidotes which are available is the penicillin, thioctic acid and as well as silbinin. And the adverse effects are mainly dry mouth, blurred vision due to midriasis and cycloplegia, urinary retention, constipation, hyperthermia, confusion, delirium and as well as restlessness.